The beam effect is found under the generate category and I'll need something to apply this to so I'll make a new solid with controller command Y, make it the comp size and click OK, and then drag out the beam effect onto it. What this effect allows us to do is generate a beam between two points. And we have a handful of controls on how that's styled and how it's displayed. First of all, we have the starting and ending points, which allow us to determine where this beam is starting and ending. But you'll notice that the beam is not connected to those two points by default, and that's because the default value for the length is set to 25%. If I increase this up to 100%, then it will go between those two points. But that's one way that you can animate between those two points starting from the center. Now this is pretty difficult to look at, so I'm gonna skip over these settings for a second and focus on inside color and outside color right now. I'm gonna change the inside color to just being a bright white, and then the outside color to being more of a yellow color. And to make that even easier to see, I'm gonna go up to the starting thickness and ending thickness and increase these. And you can see that I can do these independently, creating a tapered beam where one end is thicker than the other, but the purpose of the inside color versus the outside color is to have this glow or halo effect surrounding the beam. We can adjust the softness with the softness property to make that more or less blurry. And as you might have guessed, this is an effect that could work as a way to generate lightsabers. Though I would suggest that you check out Video Copilot's Saber plugin as a much more functional alternative. But we can't discredit the creators of this effect. It was created long before Andrew Kramer came along. Let's take a look at the other controls. I'm gonna turn the length back down to 50% and then look at this time value. These two numbers are actually connected. So if I adjust the time value, it's going to offset the beam start and end points together, cutting it off at both the starting and ending points. So in this way, I can control how long my beam is and then offset it between those two points. So you could even use this like a blaster laser shooting by. Or if I had the length all the way to 100, and I went from zero to 50%, then it will animate kind of like a lightsaber coming on. Now we have this checkbox right here that says 3D perspective, and that comes into play if we have different starting and ending thicknesses as well as animate the time value. So if I go to the first frame, set time down to zero and set a keyframe, and then go forward maybe 15 frames, and set that back up to 50%, then as this animates on, if I check the 3D perspective on and off, what it's doing is basically accounting for a perspective shift. So if I were to increase the ending thickness to be much bigger, so it looks like this beam is pointed at us, I could even lower the starting thickness and change direction a little bit. Now it looks like somebody's holding a lightsaber here and pointing it slightly towards me. Then it's going to come on slower at the start because it's technically further away from the camera. At least that's what this effect is simulating. If I were to uncheck 3D perspective, you see that my length has changed because now it's going to just uniformly come out as if a linear wipe was happening basically between those two points. Instead of accounting for that 3D perspective, it's just a linear motion. And then finally, we have the option to composite this on top of the original that we applied the effect to, just in case that's something you needed. But that's it for the controls of the beam effect. But let's say you weren't trying to make a lightsaber, you just wanted to put a line between two points, or maybe between two layers. Well, we could do this very simply with some expressions using the starting and ending point. So I'm just gonna set the starting thickness to 25 and the ending to 25 as well. And I'm gonna make the outside color the same as the inside color. So I just have a line between these two points. Then let's say that I want to put two circles. I'll just make a shape layer real quick, set it to 100 by 100, call it circle one, duplicate it. And now that I have these two points, I want to connect them by this line. So to do that, I'm just going to double click on the starting point, which will open it up down here give myself a little bit more room, and add an expression on that starting point by holding Option or Alt and clicking on that stopwatch. Then I'll just use the expression pick whip to grab circle one, the layer itself, and let go. After Effects fills in that expression code for me, and I'll do dot two comp with a capital C. It'll autofill, and between those parentheses, I wanna put an array with an open square bracket, zero comma zero comma zero. Click off and immediately my starting point is now stuck to that layer's anchor point. Wherever the position value goes, that's where the beam starting point will be. Now I'll just copy that expression, add another expression on the ending point, paste it in, and change it to circle two to reference the second circle, click away, and there we go. We have a beam connected between those two points. I can use the beam's starting and ending thickness to give some perspective to it if I wanted to, or turn it way down if I want a really thin line, 
Either way, both of these dots are now driving that beam's start and end points. But that's everything you need to know about the beam effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.